Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Paris Campbell Jr., the Ohio State slot receiver. He's going to be a player that I bet is picked relatively early compared to what his portfolio has shown. He's a projection pick. Oftentimes we think of that in a negative sense as a, a raw player who never fulfills his potential because teams believed incorrectly that he could develop. So there's a, oftentimes a cynical view about projection players in the draft community. But I actually think that Paris Campbell fits the description of a projection pick that's justified because of his speed, his athletic ability, but there's a lot more to it than just that. It's the fact that he has certain characteristics or traits that are fundamentally sound that can be built upon. And they're the important traits that can be built upon that oftentimes when people look at athletic players who are raw technically, that rawness is because they don't have those fundamentals in place. So we're going to take a look at Paris Campbell's tape against the University of Washington in the Rose Bowl and show you that fans probably won't be looking like that when it comes to Paris Campbell when their team picks him two to three years from now because this guy has the potential to develop into a complete wide receiver. When I'm looking at the value of a player who might be a projection pick at the wide receiver position, the first thing I want to see is can he catch the ball and does he have fundamentally sound technique? And here we go, right off the bat, ball over the head, thumbs come together to catch that ball, takes the hit. It's not a big game, but it doesn't matter. The fact that he can show, he can catch ball over his head, hands away from his body, hands in proper position, and take contact tells me right off the bat that if he can do this consistently, it's just about learning routes and whether he has the athletic ability to run the type of route tree that you want to see in the NFL, even if it doesn't fully show up on tape in the college game. Does the player have feel as a ball carrier? I showed this on Twitter earlier in the evening. Again, look at this. This is a chest-high throw. Oftentimes, raw receivers who, when it comes to catching the ball, have a target that's at chest or waist level, they'll often use passive hands possession, meaning that the the pinky fingers are more together and they're trying to basket catch the ball and the ball ends up bouncing off their chest. You see this in the pros with young players. You see it in college all the time. Paris Campbell, active hands, thumbs together, fingers pointed to the sky at chest level. Great job of securing that ball. Even better job of feeling the contact here. And when I talk about feeling the contact, it's that in this quick instant, he processes that the defender has the angle on him, then feels how the defender's hitting him. And instead of trying to push back because he knows he doesn't have leverage, and this is all happening in a split second. This is very intuitive. These are lessons learned playing a lot of games, having a lot of practice, having a lot of interactions where you're dealing with collisions. Watch how he steps back and reduces the, inside, the outside shoulder. And that allows the defender to pass through. And this is a five-yard differential on the play. Rather than losing three, he gains two. And that's exactly what you want to see. So consistent hand position, even on some difficult targets where receivers oftentimes overthink and made bad decisions, as well as being able to feel contact and react to it correctly as a ball carrier. Two very strong pluses for Campbell to build on. Route running. This isn't a great whip route, but I like the fact that you can see the bend. You can see him drop his weight a little bit here. You can probably drop it a little bit more. It's not a great whip route. He doesn't really explode out of that break because he's watching his quarterback and sees that the quarterback has decided to break the pocket. But He's also kind of waiting to see what happens. Doesn't think he's going to get targeted here. But the fact that he can drop his weight into a break like this, this translates to a lot of the tougher routes on the outside. You know, hitch routes, curls, comebacks, deep outs, double moves. You can see that he has that ability to decelerate if he needed. There's also some zone intelligence. I mean, this is an easy looking play because it's a broken coverage. You're going to see the shallow defender move up. You're going to see the safety fly up here as if he's going to blitz and Campbell goes right by them. And it just looks like a simple play is like waiting just to catch the ball. 
Now, this is deceptively simple, you know, in certain ways. It's actually a little bit more difficult. Let's say it's deceptively uh, more advanced than it looks because one, you can see his stem, he bends it towards the inside of his, he's going to slant or break across on an over route. And so he's selling that with the shallow defender and the deeper defender. And then he bends that back straight. Now, it doesn't fool the safety. The safety is buzzing up for a different reason. And this is a communication issue with the defense. But I like what Campbell does here. Because once he realizes that the defender's made an error, he makes an easy target for his quarterback. Just turns back and jogs and slowly creates position there and doesn't rush it. Makes sure that he's given his quarterback an easy target. That's intuitive as well. That's just a smart play. So you get a little bit of the, the, the in-breaking stem, bend it back out, realize that you have an easy catch here, and just slow down and turn back. Again, maybe that's not you know unbelievable technical, technically sound. It's not some you know genius play for wide receivers. But it's just an understanding of the situation. It's good execution. It just fits within what's happening in this particular situation. And you want to see that with a receiver. He shows that as a runner. He shows the hands as a pass catcher. And even as a zone route runner. This is The other nice thing about this play, even though it's an easy catch and it's into the body here, he doesn't lose his focus with hands position. Through all of that, active hands maintains the active hands throughout. Even on passes that a lot of receivers get sloppy with that or get undecided about it and drop it because it seems like it's going to be an easy play and then they overthink it. So the fact that Paris Campbell's making these active catches at chest level on a consistent basis, good sign for the fact that he's really ingrained this technique into his game. And when he does use low hands technique, it's warranted. This is a low and away pass. Look at that bend there. Full extension. Hands underneath and in front of him. Pulls that ball up and secures it pretty well. Difficult play. So what you're seeing from Campbell is even when the plays are behind the line of scrimmage and they're not good throws. A high throw and he takes a hit and loses yards. A low throw and he has to dig it out and then take a hit afterwards and really doesn't really take one there. But he's got incoming defender here where there's the potential for a hit. Maintains concentration, good catch radius, good technique. Here's another nice play with contact coming and he secures the ball fast. Good high hands there, secures it very quickly to his side, turns up field, takes a hard hit. You can work with this. You can work with the hip bend. You can work with the catch radius. You can work with the consistent hands and knowing where they need to be placed based on the target. That's more than just athletic ability. And that zone savvy shows up, not just on that blown play, but here on a crossing route. So he works towards the right hash. You see Haskins roll out here. And look where he is in that open space. And in zone, there's a point where you want to slow down a little bit. And he does. He squares up for that. We're going to see another play like that soon enough. Right here. Watch how... He just settles into that zone. A lot of times receivers forget between zone and man. And man, you want to keep running. In zone, you want to settle down. You want to know where that soft spot is. He does a good job settling here and just sliding slowly over so that he gets between the two defenders that are in that area. Here's another example. This is an even a better one because he's got to work between a linebacker and a defensive back. See how he works inside, back out, and he slides. But see how he stops, that he's in between? Because he knows that that, safe, that defensive back is dropping. 
So he doesn't want to, but at the same time, he doesn't want to get too far outside and tip that defensive back to come back in here. He wants him to come work to the inside. So he's in between the two zones and kind of straddling that border and just kind of slides just enough to get space from the inside guy, but still be not too far to the outside. Creates a good target. Well done. So yeah, this guy can be a bit of a projection, but if I'm going to bet on a projection, especially at the wide receiver position, there are a lot of good fundamentals to his game that show up consistently on his film. When you add that athletic ability to it, I think he can be taught how to run good routes. And I think that these are things he can even learn on his own or with the assistance of another of, of other coaches outside of the organization. I think he understands his positioning on a football field as a zone route runner, as a runner after the catch. He has good feel for contact and collisions. He has good ball security most of the time. I usually see him carry the ball pretty tight to his chest and use either arm when he's doing so. Outside arm right there. So yeah, I'll take a chance on this guy. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP Boiler Room videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.